Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Peter and uh, Jeremy, for inviting me to speak here. Um, yeah, as far uh, as we can see, you've done a great job uh, organizing this event. I think it seems to go great, and I'm looking forward to the next uh, few days. Okay, so I will um, uh, describe a recent project uh, that I um, carried out with, with Peter. And it's concerned about uh, Hessenberg varieties and what we call Poisson slices. So uh, let me just um, remind you quickly about some uh, Lee theoretic um, preliminaries. So if we have a, so we will always work with a complex semi-simple Lie algebra and G is its adjoint group. And then uh, identifying G with its dual using the killing form, we get a Poisson structure on on the Lie algebra. And as we all know, the symplectic leaves are just the uh, adjoint orbits. <clears throat> so if we now take an SL2 triple, so that's just a triple of elements satisfying the standard SL2 uh, relations, then uh, G decomposes into eigenspaces of H. And moreover, we can write down uh, the following uh, so-called Slodovy slice. So this is um, yeah, just an affine subspace, uh, Xi plus the kernel of, or the centralizer of eta, if you like. And um, it has the property that it's uh, transverse to any adjoint orbit it needs. And um, if we take a regular triple, so this means that uh, Xi or equivalently eta are uh, regular nilpotent, then the adjoint quotient map restricted to S gives an isomorphism. So in other words, uh, this slice it parameterizes uh, the regular orbits uh, in G. Okay, so, <clears throat> so this S it also has a, a Poisson theoretic uh, meaning. So it's what people call a Poisson transversal. So let me, let me remind you of what, what that is. So if we start with a, a Poisson variety, then um, yeah, a Poisson transversal is a sub-variety such that the tangent bundle <coughs> of X along or restricted to Y decomposes into the tangent bundle of Y plus the image of the annihilator of the tangent bundle of Y under the uh, Poisson tensor. So here we think of P as a map from T star X to, to Tx. So this is, uh, this comes then with a natural uh, Poisson structure. So it's the, in some sense, the Poisson analog of symplectic subvariety in uh, symplectic geometry. But it's not a Poisson uh, subvariety. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the point is, in a symplectic variety, the only Poisson subvarieties are open subsets. So, yeah. Okay. Now, um, if we start with a log symplectic um, space X, then it turns out that uh, if Y is irreducible, then also um, this uh, any Poisson transversal is, is log symplectic and the divisor is just the intersection of, of Y with that uh, divisor. And um, they also behave well under Poisson maps in the sense that um, pre-images of Poisson transversals under Poisson maps are Poisson transversals. And a typical example of this is uh, this uh, Slodovy slice. So, so in other words, if we, if we take a Hamiltonian uh, G space and with moment map mu to G, so this will be a Poisson map, then automatically um, the pre-image of this uh, Slodovy slice will be such a Poisson transversal. So therefore it comes with a natural uh, Poisson structure and um, yeah, if uh, the space we started with was log symplectic, then also the Poisson slice will be log symplectic or 
its irreducible components will be log symplectic. So in a way, this is a um, machinery to, to build uh, new Poisson manifolds out of old ones, uh, starting from a Hamiltonian uh, G-space. Okay. And the, the nice thing about this is that it, uh, yeah. so we don't really need to assume very much about the G action on, on X. Yeah, so we don't need to assume that it's free. It will just, um, I mean, the, the construction will just work. Yeah? And of course, I don't think this is new. Um, so definitely in the uh, complex symplectic context or hypercalar context, uh, this was already observed by, by Bielowski. And um, yeah, we, so what we just did was to sort of rephrase things in, in Poisson terms. And in the hypercalar uh, situation, so if, the, if we start with a holomorphic symplectic manifold or algebraic symplectic variety coming from a hypercalar manifold and the maximal compact subgroup of G um, acts in a three Hamiltonian fashion, then in fact, there's a hypercalar structure on on this uh, slice. And I think this, so in this context, the construction was already studied by, by Bielowski as a, as a way to produce uh, new hypercalor manifolds out of old ones. Okay, so, <clears throat> so one particular example, which is relevant for, for us today is uh, when we start with the, just the cotangent bundle of the group, this uh, comes with a natural uh, G cross G action given by left and right translation. The moment maps are, are written down on the slide. So we get a natural uh, symplectic structure on G times S. Yeah, so the, the moment map for the right action is just um, projection onto the, the algebra factor. And if we, so this was, basically considering just the right action, but if we consider the full uh, G cross G action, then S tau times S tau will be a slice in G plus G. And if the triple is regular, then this construction produces the um, universal centralizer. Okay, so let me just list two more properties of, uh, of these Poisson slices. So, it turns out that this uh, slice is a slice in the sense that it's transverse to any G orbit in X that it meets, so yes. And we can also realize it via Hamiltonian reduction. So the double slash is, um, by that I denote Hamiltonian reduction. So in some sense, uh, G times S is, uh, well, a kind of universal object for this uh, construction in the sense that we can obtain the Poisson slice by um, taking Hamiltonian reduction of the product of X with G times S and reducing by the diagonal uh, G action. And we can also realize it via what people call constant Whittaker reduction. So this is a symplectic reduction of X by the unipotent or well, maximal unipotent subgroup of the parabolic um, determined by the triple tau. Okay, so that was my quick review of uh, Poisson slices. And so what we are interested in is the logarithmic cotangent bundle of the wonderful compactification of G. So let me tell you what that is. Uh, so one way to describe the wonderful compactification is to say, uh, we can write down a natural embedding of G into the Grassmannian of dimension of G, dimensional planes in, in the product of G with itself, basically by identifying a group element with the graph of at G, more or less. And the, the wonderful compactification is the closure of that uh, copy of G inside uh, uh, inside this Grassmannian. Who, who is drawing on my, on my slides? Can, can you see that too? Or... <laughs> well, 
Well, okay. So this is uh, a finite union of, of G orbits, one for each uh, subset of the simple roots. And the, we have an open dense uh, stratum, which is G of course, and then there's a yeah, boundary device or normal crossings device, which can be given by these, uh, it can be decomposed into these uh, G cross G orbits. Okay, so the log logarithmic uh, cotangent bundle in that case uh, is, it turns out, is just the um, tautological bundle restricted to G bar. And it comes uh, with a canonical uh, log symplectic structure and whose open dense symplectic leaf is just the cotangent bundle of G. And the G cross G action on, on the compactification uh, yeah, induces a natural Hamiltonian action on, on this uh, tautological bundle and the moment map is just a projection onto the G plus G uh, factor. <clears throat> so if we apply this uh, Poisson slice construction here, then um, yeah, so it turns out that we get, so if we just look at the right uh, G action, then we get a a log symplectic uh, partial compactification of, of G times S. And it turns out it's actually a fiberwise compactification for the um, moment map with respect to the left action. And uh, Balibanu has uh, studied a similar situation where we look at the G cross G action. And in that case, you get her um, partial compactification of the universal centralizer. Okay. Right, so, so what does all of that has, have to do with um, Hessenberg varieties? Um, yeah, sorry, hold on a second. Um, Christoph or Peter, if you're there, yeah. whichever one of you yeah. is, is host, you should be able to mute annotations yeah. by people that aren't the uh, the speaker. I don't have that ability because I'm not host right now. Yeah, and I also do not know how to do it. So um, maybe just continue for now, Marcus. Sorry yeah, about okay, this. Okay, I'll, I'll try to ignore it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Okay, so let me just... Uh, tell you quickly what, what uh, Hessenberg varieties are, more or less, or what kind of Hessenberg varieties we are interested in. So we have again our, this time a regular SL2 triple, and this gives us a natural uh, choice of Cartan and Borel, and by pi we denote the uh, associated set of simple roots, and turns out that the Xi is a linear combination of uh, negative non-zero simple root vectors, one for each uh, simple root. And from this data, we can then form the uh, standard Hessenberg space. So this is just the direct sum of the negative uh, simple root spaces plus the, the Borel. And uh, so this is, uh, a B invariant uh, subspace of, of the Lie algebra, and we can form this associated vector bundle, which is called the standard family of Hessenberg varieties. And yeah, Peter and uh, Abe and also Balibanu have uh, observed that this comes actually with a natural uh, log symplectic structure, and its open dense symplectic leaf is again uh, G times S tau. And we have a Hamiltonian uh, G action here. And the moment map is just, uh, yeah, the one you would expect basically. And the fibers of this moment map, that's what people call um, Hessenberg varieties. And so each, of, each fiber comes with a natural uh, action of the centralizer of, of X. Okay, so that's the information about Hessenberg varieties that we need. Now, in a 
recent preprint, uh, Bali Badung has observed that her partial compactification of the universal centralizer actually is um, isomorphic or, uh, to the Poisson slice inside, or one way to phrase this is that it's uh, isomorphic inside the uh, family of Hessenberg varieties. And the isomorphism is compatible with the uh, moment maps on each side. <clears throat> so, um, so in particular, we can embed the um, Hessenberg varieties for each, for each X in the slice, we can embed the associated Hessenberg variety into, into G bar by first viewing it as a as a subset of or sub variety of Z bar and then uh, projecting down to, to G bar. It turns out that this is uh, an embedding when restricted to these fibers. So, so the proof of this um, follows the following steps. So first of all, um, the universal centralizer sits naturally inside um, G times S. And G times S, on the other hand, sits naturally inside the standard family of Hessenberg varieties as the open dense symplectic leaf. And it turns out that it actually sits inside the intersection of G times S with this Poisson slice. And um, now the restriction of this inclusion to, to the uh, fibers moment fibers inside the universal centralizer bar, it turns out that this extends to an isomorphism with the associated uh, Hessenberg variety, at least as long as X is um, semi-simple. Yeah, so, so these are both um, toric varieties and the associated fan is basically given by the uh, wild chamber. And so, so in that way, one observes that this inclusion of Z into uh, this family of Hessenberg varieties, it actually extends to, to an inclusion on, of uh, Z union, the pre-image of the uh, semi-simple uh, elements. Oh, sorry. So this here should actually be a mu bar. That's a, that's a typo, sorry. And now comes the sort of crucial uh, step which is one observes that both these uh, sub varieties have co-dimension two inside their respective ambient varieties. And one can then uh, show that actually this uh, isomorphism then has to extend across these co-dimension two complements and give the desired isomorphism. So that's basically her proof. And so now in the last three minutes or so, I, I can now come to our uh, main result, which is basically a sort of analog of, of her result for our space uh, G times S bar. And it turns out this is actually isomorphic to uh, the standard family of Hessenberg varieties in, this, in the following, in the same way as uh, Balibanus isomorphism between the universal centralizer and uh, the Poisson slice. And so a particular corollary of this is that now we get actually a embedding of the Hessenberg variety associated to any X, not just a regular X. And yeah, so our proof is basically modeled on, on her proof and the, the crucial step is to basically the last step to observe that the um, uh, yeah that the subset of uh, G times S union the moment map pre image of the regular semi simple elements that this has again co dimension at least two in the uh, closure of G times S so that the um, map that we would write down um, extends. Okay, so I'm out of time and I'm also out of slides. So thank you very much for, for your attention.